my dashing darlings, and welcome to the spectacular season finale of Hey Queen. With me, your host, Johnny McGovern. Today's show is going to be divine. Our guest today is a two-time drag racer and is about to be a two-time couch breaker. <laughs> They've been gagging the children across the country in the new HBO series, We're Here, and has returned to the Sparkle Couch to tell us all about it. They're the elephant queen of the drag scene. I'm talking about the phenomenal Eureka O'Hara. But before they bop on out here, there's two zebra queens of the gag scene in the Hey Queen studio. It's my emotional support orchestra, Adam Joseph and Erica Tor. Hey, 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 queen. You know he did it. <laughs> that was a surprise just for me. Just for you. Uh -huh. Now, audience, if you know my gay pimp music, then you might know the original version of that song. Hit it. I, 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 oh, I, I, oh, I, 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 oh, I, 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 oh, I, fuck your boyfriend. Hey. Girl, I fucked your boyfriend. He, he slipped, slipped and, and fell in the dick. dick. He, he slipped, slipped and fell in the dick. He slipped and fell in the dick. He slipped and fell on my dick. Just a wholesome family fun. The slip was consensual. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it is our season finale today, and I just want to take some time to thank my sissy besties for uprooting their whole life and putting everything on pause to run into town and to be here with me in what could have been a really sad and depressing season. <sighs> and I just, I'm so grateful. I love you both because you've made this fun. And I know Lady Red is smiling down and, and appreciating you as well and making fun of Adam Joseph's bang piece <laughs> and telling Erica she looks weird <laughs> and all the rest. <laughs> so thank you both so much. I love you. We're so we happy too. we could be here. We love you, Johnny. Honey, what a delight. We, we really pulled these episodes out, sweetie. I don't know if you know, but we did. <laughs> now today, what a finale. We have the elephant queen herself, Eureka O'Hara here. Ooh. Hit it, emotional support orchestra. She's turning it out, proportionizing. Eureka O'Hara, the elephant queen. And we'll be back with Eureka right after this very gay break. Ooh. It's pride season. Are you ready to show off your body loud and proud or is a huge bush holding you back? My bush! Don't worry, sweetie. Our sponsors for today, manscaped.com want to help you make your pubes pride parade ready. Pride season is upon us, but my pubes are too ginormous. Prep for pride with the brand new Lawnmower 4.0 and the ultra smooth package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code QUEEN at manscaped.com. Go to manscaped.com and use the code. When you're hairy beast like me, sometimes people look at you and say, Baby, let me shave your shoulders tonight. When it comes time to get your man areas in shape, well, honey, you don't want to use this. Ooh, you don't want to use this. And you definitely don't want this near any of your special areas. You could cut your dick off. That's what I'm saying. Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below the waist grooming. Ah, the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is now available in the US and Canada. The spotlight lets you see what you're doing, and the skin safe technology means you're not going to nick your bits. I'm wealthy, and I love investing in new technology crypto, NFTs, and the Lawnmower 4.0, baby. So listen up, queens. Get 20% off. Use the code QUEEN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code QUEEN. And throw up that hypnotization again. Go to manscaped.com and use the code QUEEN. Prune your pubes for pride.
Our guest today is the Elephant Queen, has been spreading her drag joy all across this great country of ours in her hit series, We're Here. Please welcome Eureka O'Hara. Proportionizing hey, Eureka O'Hara, the Elephant Queen. Ooh, <laughs> my new single. Yeah. I've been iTunes for about six months. <laughs> Thank y'all. Hey, Queen. Hey, girl. Sweetie, what a delight to see you. It's really a wonderful pleasure to see you today, too, Johnny. You look incredible. Oh, this old thing. Are you yeah. coming to cast a spell and turn me into a mouse? Well, Mom, if that's what it takes, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving me the witch's couture today. I'll take it, honey. Listen, I love the witches. I love Angelica. Houston and Port and Hathaway could have done a little better, I think. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Contrary to nope, everyone feels that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking a COVID test out in the parking lot. Oh my god, the COVID <laughs> test. I've never had a blood test yet. Y'all are serious at Hey Queen. We gotta be we gotta keep it safe. We can't be have all the biggest stars of drag coming around. I got my little band-aid, they pricked my finger. It was actually kind of exciting. I was like, poke me in. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but it was, uh, I found out that I have the antibodies. Coronavirus. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Shit is getting real. Because you were telling me that uh, when we're here shut down yeah. uh, last February, it was because people were getting sick on set. Tell me about that. Yeah, so like uh, February, whenever we got cut off, when the coronavirus started really hitting, um, we had a couple like staff that got sick, but also there was like rumored to one of the people we were working with was potentially sick as well. So they shut filming down immediately. It was so crazy because it was the, our drag day. So <clears throat> we were all getting ready in our hotel rooms and they were like, we're calling this meeting. We need everyone to come down and meet in the, um, the PO which is like, you know, the producer's office. So we come down. I had, like, no makeup on yet. Shangela's fully painted. Bob's fully painted in a mask, like Darth Vader, like... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're all sitting there, and they were just like, yeah, you know, we hate to say it, but we have to leave um, due to the safety of everyone working, so on and so forth. So we literally flew out that day. Mm. It was crazy. But I came home, and I was actually, like, sick as a dog for, like, a good two weeks, and I didn't know the symptoms then, but um, I found out today with your blood testing yeah. that I had the antibody, mama. Mm -hmm. And you know what I say? When you got the antibody, put a suit on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so I guess I was sick. You know, I kept telling people, I think I've had it. I think I've had it. But today, because of Hey Queen, I found out I have the antibodies. And I have had it. But she said I got some serious antibodies. She said I was lucky. So That's good. Well, thank goodness like her, you yeah. are okay. Yes, Z, thank our goodness, nurse, she's yeah. been very helpful all season long. What just what a sweetheart she was too. She was so funny. Oh my god, but she was like she was comparing me to the largest man she ever met. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> she said she said I just met him in Europe and he was pulling a tractor with his teeth. You're wow. Like and I was like, "Work." Okay. <laughs> you must know my oral skills, mama. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you are a-okay that yeah. you came through that, honey. Yeah. Well, Eureka, now it's time to get to the tea. The tea. We got to talk all about We're Here. Yeah. What a smash hit nominated yeah. for Outstanding Unstructured Reality Program and renewed for season two. Yes. Um, it's been an incredible experience. HBO is such a delight to work with. Um, it's cool because it's like me, Bob, and Shangela are like the RuPaul of this show. So we get like our trailers and our teams and it's just, it's such a professional level of this industry that it's just, I mean, it's just incredible, I have to say. And then it's also like emotionally rewarding. You know, I, um, I really have found a lot of myself, my adulthood as a professional entertainer through working on this show, and also just what I really wanted to be doing. You know, I think sometimes with this career, you can get into these like ruts where it's like, well, why am I still doing this? What, what should I be doing? And when I found this opportunity and started working on the show, I realized, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I've been through so much in my life that I'm able to connect with people in a way that I kind of always known I've been able to, but with this show, I'm able to make them feel comfortable and they feel comfortable enough to open up 
because they relate with me, because I'm honest with what I've been through, and um, we're able to talk some real conversations that are, like, really needed right now, especially in the queer community, you know? Definitely. Yeah, so it's, it's just incredible to be a part of. And Bob and Chandler are great to work with. I have to say, they really are. Well, we're going to get into all the details uh -huh. of the making of the show, how it started, okay. all the rest, a little later. But right now, I want to know how you felt about the show coming out, everything being shut down. You even had to get to oh escape quarantine to go see your building size I billboard. Know. That was incredible. There it is. It was the gag. Unbelievable. Oh my God. The gag. The gag. But girl, I escaped quarantine to go see that. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> I was dancing down the streets to see that. That must have been so exciting. It was beautiful, yeah. I mean, it's also just beautiful for queer culture. You know what I mean? And to be a part of it, to be one of the three faces on the side of a building in Hollywood on Sunset fucking Boulevard, excuse my language. Yeah. But you know, when I was driving over the corner, I couldn't help but tear up, you know what I mean? And cry because it was just like, Girl, like, that's what dreams are made of. As yeah. a little fat queer kid in East Tennessee, uh -huh. you know what I mean? That's what you dream of pulling over the heel to see is your big ass on the side of a building. Yeah. <laughs> so it was really amazing. We all enjoyed your Instagram clip where you were like, that, 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 that. I had to give them a little buck, you know, for the kids. Yes, you did piece. it, sweetie. So how have you been holding up in quarantine? I mean, yeah. you're here and we're in West Hollywood with mm -hmm. us. Tell me how that whole this whole experience has been for you. It's a lot, yeah. I mean, it's it's lonely. You know, I think no matter who you are or how many people you have in your life, no matter how many Zoom calls you make, it's a sad and lonely time. It's it's a self discovering time. You know, I've also stayed very busy because I've needed to. But I learned so much about myself during quarantine. It's so weird because I'm a very extroverted person in my professional life. But in my personal life, I'm actually very introverted. Like I love a good Netflix chill, maybe a cocktail, maybe one or two friends at the most. You know, very personal, very low key. Um, but then even not having that, like being by yourself by yourself, uh, that's hard for me because I'm always around someone always doing something. So being made to set still was really hard. Um, and it was emotionally hard. Like it, it fucked me up <laughs> a little yeah. bit. I had to like discover how to deal with myself by myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know if anyone else had that issue, but that was probably the hardest part was like learning to be alone, you know, in a world where, um, you know, I have trust and abandonment issues from my childhood and traumas and things like that. So like loneliness is really hard for me. Um, so really being pushed to be alone made it very difficult to deal with quarantine, at least, especially at first. Um, the first, like, month or two was really hard. Yeah. Um, but then coming through it, bitch, I was, like, glad I came through it because, I like, now I really enjoy being alone sometimes. And I'm, like, sometimes I'm, like, y'all can go home, y'all, right. because I, <laughs> I can't wait to be at this house right. by myself. Clear out, everybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, what were some of the other things that you learned about yourself in that time of introspection? Um, you know, that I had never fully moved into my apartment. Okay. I had so many things to unpack and organize. Um, so I was like just picking one thing like every few days to work on. And now my apartment is just a wreck all over again. Uh. But <laughs> at one point, you guys. Yes, you got it together. <laughs> it, it was organized and beautiful. Uh -huh. I swear. Um, you know, and probably like I forgot that I, I like to sew. Like crafty wise, I got a little mm. crafty. Um, I'm also working on a lot of projects. Like I'm writing a film with a friend of mine. I'm working on a book. Uh, which is going to be really cool. Fun. Um just doing projects like that that I kind of forgot I love to write. So I've been doing a lot of writing um, and catching up with people. Girl, I made friends with neighbors I never would have made friends with before. Even the neighbors who used to yes. yell at you for turning the music down? Girl, <laughs> Miss Thing. Oh, they were all too ready. And Miss Thing, the, the music was louder right. during quarantine. <laughs> I was going to be real. Some days the only way I survived was turning the bass up and the music mm. up and pretending I was at the club. Right. You know, <laughs> Turned all the lights on, yeah. had a cocktail, <laughs> dropped some G. I was like, woo! <laughs> Just by myself, bitch, dancing with wig hands, girl. <laughs> Flipping the lights on and off, right. charging yourself ten dollars <laughs> cover. <laughs> yes, sometimes you got to do it. Club Elephant was on mm. the move, <laughs> bro. It was a mess. Hello, children.